Welcome back here, Levins. This is the final part of the uh, PAGS explanations. This is part three. So you would have already seen that I have uploaded part one and part two. Now, after this, even though this is a final uh, part of the explanation of the experiments, after this, I'm going to upload one more video, which would be explaining the key terms like accuracy, anomaly, reproducible, repeatable, etc which usually pops up with these experimental type of questions. So let's move on to the experiments. PAG7 is a series and parallel circuits. So there is not much to explain in that. If you have, so what you would have done here is you will have a bulb that is connected across a power supply. You will observe its brightness. And then instead of having one bulb, you will connect two in series and then you will see what is having what is happening to its brightness. The same you will do for a parallel circuit also. Initially, you will have two bulbs connected in uh, parallel. You will observe how their brightness are and then you will have three bulbs connected in parallel and then you will observe the brightness and compare it with the previous one to see if there's any difference or the same. This is a simple way of checking what happens in series and parallel circuits. Then one more extra bit you can do is uh, in each of these methods, you can have an ammeter and a voltmeter connected in the circuit. So keep in mind, you always connect an ammeter in series and you connect the voltmeter in parallel. So you can initially you will connect that in uh, this circuit here and make a note of the ammeter voltmeter readings. Then you will connect it here and then in this circuit and then you you will connect it at different positions. You might connect it here and see what happened. What does the ammeter reading say? You will connect it here and see what the ammeter reading says. You can connect it here and see what the ammeter reading says. And when you do that, what you will see is in a CD circuit, Wherever you connect the ammeter, whether it is here, whether it is here, wherever you connect the ammeter in a series circuit, the current shows the same reading. Okay, the current would be the same. The ammeter shows the same reading. But if you would compare the voltage that you had here with the voltage that you're going to have here and here, you will see that if it was three volts here, here you will in this in uh, one and two you will see that the voltage has become 1.5 each so basically what happens in a series circuit is the voltage is shared among the components it doesn't have to share equally always if they are the same uh, they will be shared equally so in a series circuit current stays the same anywhere in the circuit irrespective of how many components you have potential differences shared between the components so that uh, they become equal to the voltage of the power supply. When you do the same in a parallel circuit, you connect the voltmeter in parallel across the bulbs. You will see whether you, even if you have one, two or three bulbs in a circuit connected parallel, the voltmeter reading always stays the same across that branch. Current will be shared. Current will be shared in such a way that it splits among the different branches. It adds up. If you have the current flowing through the different branches, it will add up to give you the main current. Okay, so that is what the series and parallel circuits is about in PAG 7. Again, any electricity experiment, you have to make sure that you switch off the circuit Whenever you are not taking readings, you have to be careful. It is nowhere near any source of water. OK. Moving on to the last set of PAGs, PAG8. PAG8 is on waves. There are two types of PAG8s. We have two sections in PAG8. The first one is investigating the reflection of a plane mirror, as you can see. So you can see the components of this diagram uh, on your screen. You have a ray box, which is connected to a power pack. And then you have a plane mirror kept. You, we generally keep it on a white sheet of paper. 
and that is our initial setup. Then what we do is you align the, so you switch on the uh, power supply and then you can see a ray of light coming out from the ray box. You align the ray box in such a way that it is 90 degrees to the mirror. And then first itself, when you align, you keep the mirror on the paper, make sure you take an outline of it or draw a line in front of the mirror so that you know where to keep it each time. Because when you're doing the experiment, you might touch it, it might move, so you know exactly where to put it back. So once you keep the mirror and draw a line in front of it like that, uh, you shine the ray coming from the uh, ray box at 90 degrees to the mirror. When you shine it that way, that line that you are, you can you would see there, you just uh, highlight it with a dotted line and that dotted line or the dashed line should be the normal. So basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to draw a normal to the mirror. Then once you have drawn normal, then you keep the ray box at different angles. But when you keep them, you need to make sure that the from the point where the normal starts from the mirror, the ray box is shining, the ray that comes out from the ray box is shining exactly to that point. So all the points should be starting from, so you can see this here. So you first draw this normal line there. And then next time when you shine this ray, you need to make sure that it goes to the same point. When you keep at another angle also, it should go to the same point. All the rays should be starting from the same point. So you shine a ray of light like that. You again draw that ray of light and then you will be able to see a reflected light. You trace the path of that also. And then just as I said, uh, you will do this at different positions. And then at for each position of the ray light, uh, you need to measure the angle of incidence and angle of reflection. And then you will do it for at least five different angles. Now, what you need to keep in mind is when you measure the angle of incidence and angle of reflection, a common mistake students do is the angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. It's not between the surface and the normal. So our angle of incidence is this one and our angle of reflection is this one. So you can measure once you have drawn everything with pencils, you can then measure that using a, a protractor. Again, as usual, I have added a link to it uh, so that you can see the demo and then all these links will be there in the description bit. And now the last one in our list, which is a refraction of light through a rectangular glass block. Now here <clears throat> it is a glass block, so it will not reflect. It is going to refract. So we use the same ray box itself. Everything is very much similar to our reflection one. The only difference here is the ray, instead of reflecting in the previous one, it will be refracting here. So you keep the, you will do exactly the same thing how you started. So there you drew the line of the mirror there so that you know each time where to keep it. Here you will trace the outline of the glass block so that again if it moves, you know exactly where to put it back. So you trace the outline of the glass block and like you did in the previous one, first you shine a ray of light perpendicular to the metal block. So how do you know that it is exactly perpendicular? You will see the ray of light passing through the block straight without any deviation. That is usually what happens when you shine uh, the wave at 90 degrees to the block. Then, like you said before, you trace the path of the array using dotted lines. That is your normal. And then Again, exactly like what you did before, you change the angle at which the way, uh, light is falling on the glass block and then you will see a new reflected light through. So it will look something like this. So it, actually what is going to happen is you will trace, uh, sorry, uh, you will trace this bit and then 
you will trace this bit also. This is the, what you will be able to see, this line here. Sorry, that line is not that straight that I drew. And then when you take the glass block out, you will see some empty space here, which then you will join. Okay. And then this is the angle of this is the angle of incidence and this is our angle of refraction. You will measure them. And like in the previous one, you will then again do at another angle, you will do the same thing. Sorry, my lines are not so straight because I'm doing, doing hand drawings, okay? And then at least five different angles. And for each angle, you'll measure the angle of incidence and angle of refraction, okay? I have attached a link for this one also. So with that, we come to the end of all the packs. We have covered all the packs. I didn't want the video to be too long. So I'm going to put the rest of the things as another video. And hopefully that should be the last video regarding the packs. So there I'll explain the key terms and what to look out for when they ask you questions based on those key terms. So see you soon in the next one.